My name is Jonathan and I work for Verizon. I totally get how important it is to stay connected. We're connecting with people, we're offering them solutions. Customers can do what they need to do whenever they need to do it online. Because it gives customers the ability to not come into the store, they can simply tap and swipe. Something that they can use wherever they are. We care about keeping you safe. At Verizon, we are here and we are ready. We are open 24-7 online, so you can keep managing everything from home and through the Verizon apps and verizon.com. Hello, everyone. Our teams continue the work of keeping our customers connected, whether it's our conferencing teams in North Carolina or Iowa, or these team of dedicated field technicians and the people who support them in the back office. We've said it again and again, we are here and we are ready. Hey there, everybody, welcome. We are live here, noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Uh, you'll see that we've got a little bit of a different setup today, uh, but it's so good to be back with you. Uh, like a lot of you, we are now working from home as well. Well, why is that? Well, here in uh, New Jersey, uh, the governor has issued a stay at home order. So we're staying out of the way of the essential work that needs to be done here. As they're saying, stop, stay home, stop the spread, save lives. So like I said, we're looking a little different today. We're all working from home. I've got Hans and Christy uh, on the line with me here. Uh, I have set up a uh, new studio here in the basement of my home. So uh, working from home and you know, in different ways and thank all of you who continue to serve our customers. So let's get right to the updates. Uh, we will go to Hans first. Hans, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Jeremy. And hi, all the teamers out there. As Jeremy said, uh, with the new restrictions in New Jersey, we are working from home today, which, uh, which is working fine with all the connectivity and thing we have. A uh, quick update from me. I mean, first of all, uh, we continue to work through the situation, which uh, will continue for a while, as we all know. Uh, the safety and health of all of you and the employees is the most important we have. Uh, but we also have a, a very big task to keep the networks up and uh, seeing that uh, we're actually performing them because there are so many people, especially in this nation of the United States, that is relying on our network, but also globally. Uh, we're doing a, a enormous work with the Verizon Business Group globally to supporting customers and not to forget the Verizon Media Group that is actually doing uh, enormous work to communicate uh, around uh, news around Corona and all of that, which is also very important. It's been quite a lot of development during the weekend as well. Uh, we have more of our employees uh, that has been diagnosed with the COVID-19. Uh, Chris will come back to that. We also uh, have seen very strong measures uh, or from many of the governors in the United States, but also in the rest of the world, uh, which of course are impacting us. But in general, we were prepared for it. So uh, with the enormous job that all of uh, us have done with the work from home and all of that, uh, we were actually been coping with it. So uh, that's very good. When it comes to the network, we will have a network data update tomorrow, but in general, uh, the whole team is doing it fantastically. Uh, the network holds up uh, in a good way. Uh, traffic is moving quite dramatically in between uh, different places. As of course, a lot of people are working from home and doing WebEx and, and uh, conferencing are changing that pattern, but we are doing that well. And, Kyle and the whole network operation centers and the field force are doing a tremendous work to see that uh, we continue to see that we have capacity across our network and of course doing priority uh, for uh, the first responders. But we will also do more right now because we understand how important uh, uh, communication is so we will later today uh, come out with a press release talking about that we will waive overage charges and late fees to support customers who may be financially affected by the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, we will also announce two months waived internet service charges for current lifeline customers. And, and a new affordable internet option for low income house households. So we're really trying to see that everyone that has tough times this times to get access, we will help them and, uh, and actually have new service for it. We'll also add 15 gig of high speed data for wireless consumers as, and, and small business customers to be automatically applied with no customer action necessary. We will you see that our customers are getting the extra 15 gig. Uh, and uh, we will, as we said before, provide first responders with priority and preemption ability for voice and data if needed. 
and as uh, as always, our uh, FIOS and uh, uh, and DSL broadband internet plans have no caps at the moment. So we're doing this to see that uh, everyone affected on these uh, tough times uh, will also get access to the technology that is so important either for business or for education or in many cases for leisure as many people are staying home regardless where you are so that will come out later on and and it's it's uh, we don't we want our customers to uh, we want to eliminate the worry that they have uh, during these uh, tough times so that we will do do tomorrow uh, do today later on but uh, i will come back tomorrow and talk more about the network but in general the team is doing a great job and for all of you in the field in the stores and the few that we have out there, you're doing an extremely important work. And I spoke to several CEOs this morning uh, and on Friday, and uh, all of them were extremely thankful for what Verizon is doing so they can up help their business. So it's a balance we're balancing every day. And I think the team is doing a great job of doing it. So uh, thank you very much again. Back to you, Jeremy. Hey, Hans, thanks so much. And thanks for that reminder to our teams out in the field uh, who continue to, to do that uh, that work that they do. So uh, let's bring in Christy now for uh, an update as well. Christy, I know you've got a lot of things uh, that have happened over the weekend. And as we uh, are halfway through this Monday on the East, East Coast, if, if that's our new normal for going by those hours now. So Christy, take it away, please. Thanks, Jeremy and Hans and all the V-teamers that are watching around the world. A couple of things I'd like to start off with. First, you heard Hans mention, I think one of the most important things that we want to make sure people know is that uh, we care deeply about our V-teamers who have uh, contracted the coronavirus, and we feel it's important to be very transparent with you about that. So you've received letters or notifications as we've been remediating buildings and quarantining groups of employees. Uh, but at this point, we have just over 50 V-teamers around the world that uh, have the virus. And we're working closely to make sure they're getting the care they need and they have contact with uh, the benefits team and we have a way to help them get resources as they need it. And we'll continue to share information with you on that. And I would just ask all of our fellow employees to have compassion and care for those of us that uh, in our V-team system, any of our folks that uh, could track coronavirus. It's highly contagious and obviously no one does something like this on purpose. So we really wanna have all of our V-teamers out there uh, knowing that if this happens to you, we want you to tell us, and I've got a whole team of people personally following up and managing the cases so you uh, have what you need in that time. Um, another thing I wanted to highlight, building on what you heard from Hans and from Jeremy, is that we have continued to move at speed with all of your assistance to find new ways to get people able to work at home. So when we started this journey, we just didn't think it was possible. Last week, folks pushed through barriers and found a way to get about 70% of our folks working from home. And as I said here this morning, folks worked through the weekend and have now got almost 90%, uh, just over 90% of our V-teamers working from a home environment. And we've only been able to do that with the great collaboration of our leaders and our employees throughout the world. And so for that, we're very grateful. Uh, the retail employees, we've now taken down uh, the majority of our footprint with uh, a letter to all the customers that Hans highlighted that Ronin has sent out, really directing them to uh, web-based services to get their needs met and left kind of critical reasons only for coming into the store. And we're staffing those with the bare bones skeleton crew. And we've gone to geographic uh, hub centers and tried our best to communicate that to, to the customers and the team that's out there for us. We thank you very much. Also, with regard to VBG, the team has pivoted and have over 90% of folks at home. Many of these jobs previously not work at home roles. So lots of training and work this week to get folks equipment and skilled up for how to do uh, all of the support that we do for our customers in VBG from a home environment. Similarly, for our GN and T organization, we have had just great collaboration from our leaders, from our employees and our partners. Uh, at the CWA and the IBEW so that we have home garaging and some work at home provisions that we previously didn't have because we care deeply about keeping all of our people safe and we're very grateful for that support at this time. And so continuing to work through with the technicians, how to keep them safe, and we've reduced all of our calls for dispatch to really the most critical and urgent of cases. And so I would just like to all the V-teamers to know that this is constant, uh, multiple calls a day, I'm on an open bridge about 20 hours a day myself, 
And I can't thank all of you enough for being with us and for the leaders uh, that are helping uh, balance our need to keep the world connected with keeping our folks safe. So I have, uh, I'll flip it back to Jeremy. I know people have questions for Hans or myself and a few other things I'll close with. Good, Christy, thanks so much. Uh, and uh, I, I've got uh, the live questions up here. So if anyone has any, they can email those to live at verizon.com. Like I said, along this path, we are taking your questions along the way and, and seeing what are the ones that we can answer that really apply to a lot of folks that, that are clicking in to watch this. But before we went, uh, we get into questions, uh, last week, Tammy mentioned this story about uh, an employee from our VBG group, Amanda Lee, who went above and beyond to keep uh, a major customer connected. And I just want to play you a, a quick clip uh, from Amanda about what she did to keep that major automotive company going. and I'm a client partner of Mobile Solutions for the VBG Group on the wireless side, and I'm in Dallas, Texas. Everything's going well here. I've got five-year-old twins, and my husband's a coach, so he's home, and uh, juggling that has been <laughs> a little bit of a task, but we're getting along. I reached out to all of my customers nationwide in anticipation that people would have to be working from home potentially. And I had my largest customer call me and ask if we could get 200 MiFi's for them. Of course, the inventory was not there. I contacted a third party company who told us that they could secure 200 for the customer. Unfortunately, the third party company had a problem with their warehouse and they did not get the shipment. So I text messaged my customer and I said, we're looking at alternatives. And she said she could hold off anybody else until the shipment came in if I could just help her to get 10. I found in the Fort Worth office, which is about an hour away from me, that there were 10 devices, exactly what I needed. So I delivered the MiFi's and my customer was extremely grateful for that. They did eventually receive the MiFi's because of what we did and went the extra mile. My customer did also activate yesterday 36 smartphones and she did all of those on Verizon. So I was really grateful for that. In these uncertain times, it's so rewarding to be part of a company that can connect people when we can't be physically connected. It really makes a difference and makes you feel really good about your company and the strength of the network and everything that we work for every day to see people benefit from that is really important and really rewarding. Amanda Lee from our VBG team, who's uh, based down in, in Texas, and some amazing things that she did to keep uh, keep to keep her customers connected. I think these are the stories that we like to keep reminding people of that our folks, even if they're working from home or they've got to figure out the ways to do it differently, they are still doing it. So a great reminder there, Amanda. Thank you. Great job. We'll continue bringing you those voices from the field as as this rolls on. So let's get to some uh, some questions uh, here first. Hans, I want to start with you. Uh, last week there was uh, the FCC. Uh, you know, uh, did some things with Spectrum to keep uh, Americans connected and, and gave us uh, Verizon some, some more access there. Folks want to know what that means and what that enables. Yeah, no, thank you, Jeremy. Uh, that's a good question. I mean, uh, uh, all carriers got uh, 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 additional Spectrum last week, basically lending uh, or borrowing spectrum that was unused, either was from DISH or which are not using their spectrum uh, and uh, or FCC. So we are getting that. And of course, the good thing of getting more spectrum is that we can have, add more capacity on top of the network and uh, make it available to more customers. So that's and we got uh, a spectrum uh, on the frequency that is um, the normal frequency we have, where we have uh, the majority of our handsets. So this is good, you know, if you have a congestion area or so things like that, so you can add some spectrum. And we, we have borrowed that for 60 days right now to see that if uh, something changes, we can actually use that spectrum. So it's all, all good. And I think it's how the industry is coming together in moments like this uh, and actually sharing assets in order to serve the communities uh, and uh, the most vulnerable in this situation. So uh, I think it's really good and it's going to add uh, to our robust network, uh, new possibilities for us to continue to act. That's great. And you mentioned the uh, the extra data capacity and that, that information is going out here shortly for consumers uh, yeah. and, and customers. So, uh, Christy, want to want to switch over to you for a, a quick question here. Obviously, over the weekend, New Jersey Go Governor Phil Murphy uh, issued the stay at home in New Jersey. 
uh, and that's extending out the uh, how long we'll be in this work from home environment. Uh, a lot of talk about essential services. Are there specific groups or departments within Verizon that are considered essential? And I'm, I'm guessing they probably know at this point, but just want to clear that up. We've got a couple of questions about that. Great, thanks for that question. Yeah, the situation continues to evolve very rapidly, uh, both here in the United States and abroad in countries around the world like India, Germany, a number of other countries in Europe, Italy, Spain, France, continuing to change movement standards, similarly in the Philippines. So we're monitoring that around the world and I'm sure I didn't issue a complete list there because it's changing so rapidly. And so of course, no matter what, we comply with any of these rules around the world. And then uh, in the United States, in particular, given the, uh, the question from the V-teamer, uh, governors are issuing uh, mandates for sheltering in place, sheltering at home. And then they're saying, unless you're covered by a critical uh, industry or an essential service, that the, the, the operation needs to be closed. And the communications network is considered a critical infrastructure uh, in, and required to support uh, key things in society, even in an emergency. And so our industry is exempt from that, but the legal team with Craig Sullivan's guidance is going through all of the various areas of operation that we have to make sure that we're really restricting what we have operational to the confines and the purposes of the critical infrastructure and essential for business. Then where we do have employees in those states operating and they, we feel they fall into a, a position that requires us to be present at work, we're giving those employees a specific letter that explicitly states why they're working so that if they were to be uh, stopped by law enforcement or inquired as to what their movement was driven by, they'd be able to, to show support for that. And so we're trying to make sure everybody has that information. And as I mentioned on the retail footprint side, we've gone to uh, uh, you know, a geographic consolidation. So there's a point of entry for people if they urgently have to pick up something related to getting connected for their business or their work at home, school at home. And otherwise we're directing people to the internet uh, to do our online services. And then similarly with our calls and dispatch, Kevin Service and the other leaders in Kyle's organization have gone to really sort of emergency uh, calls to keep connectivity up. And in many cases, we're not going into homes at all due to restrictions in the states. And maybe add in there, uh, Christy, that, uh, and Rona will probably comment on it later on this week, but we see clearly uh, uh, much more uh, uh, traffic on the digital journeys for our consumers and small and medium businesses actually using that track. And uh, our IT group has actually uh, done a terrific job to see that we cope with that because, of course, more people are actually using the digital way of ordering stuff or e upgrading or getting accessories or what it might, what it might be. So uh, it's a whole team effort. Everyone is involved, but I just want to shout out that because I know a, a lot of the teams working in IT need to ramp up the capacity in order to handle that. And I think that Rona will come back later this week and, uh, and tell us how, how much that uh, uh, has shifted from uh, store visits to actually working to the digital. But, but it's clearly that the traffic has moved quite dramatically. Yeah, and Hans, interesting you're mentioning that. We've been looking at the numbers on, on the network and how we saw gaming and video use. Uh, are you surprised at all that the jump in voice usage uh, on the network and, and people staying connected more? Uh, no, maybe not. I think that uh, as the word has moved, you know, with other types of means of communication, uh, of course, I see uh, the growth on uh, VPN, uh, I, I think, is the most uh, important. And I think that we saw uh, almost a 30% increase on VPN when we measured last week. We'll come out with something later this week. Uh, I think that is just the start of it. As we uh, speaking to many of uh, large corporations, they have, like us, uh, a big majority of all their employees working from home. And, uh, and just so we know, the whole... Uh, Verizon Business Group are working relentlessly to see that we can move capacity, we can uh, add uh, uh, IP uh, sort of connections, uh, and of course devices for them uh, to, for many uh, employees or corporations to work from home. So um, I think Tammy talked about that uh, hotspots and things like that are in shortage, and we're doing everything we can to see that we're delivering that as quickly as possible because so many companies are working in a different way right now. So, uh, so I'm not super surprised. Of course, 75% up on 
uh, on gaming, um, I, I, I guess, uh, at least for us that has um, some uh, children, you know, we, we were not super surprised over that. We, we see it happening all the time at home. Yeah, and I, I can tell you definitely here in the, the Godwin household in uh, Morristown, we have uh, been going through a lot of Netflix lately to find out what's new. Uh, so uh, a lot of a lot of stuff out there, I'll tell you that much. So uh, thanks for that, Hans. Uh, Christy, a, a question for you, and it's one that we've seen coming up uh, time and time again now. This one uh, from Irving, Texas, Prakish, a member of the, the Global Network and Technology team, wanting to know, hey, if you're in a spot where you can, does the business need any volunteers uh, where they could chip in and help in other parts of the business and, and how can they do that? Thanks for that question from Irving, Texas. Really appreciate it. We are uh, hopefully here in the next uh, day or so going to have put online through our um, what would normally be where you'd go look for job postings. Uh, we're going to actually have on their assignments so people will be able to go there and find out where they might be able to sign up to do an assignment that might take a couple of hours, might take a couple of days, might be something they could fill in when they have some downtime. And then also we're looking uh, where we have uh, job classifications that normally can only be done in the field, uh, such as our retail store associates and many of our field and our network roles. We may be uh, able to launch uh, new roles where people can be outfitted to handle calls and services from, from home. As, as Hans mentioned, we will see ticket increases, wait times and such as we've completely shifted our delivery model and we also know that we're, you know, all of us are in this together. So many of us have uh, kids at home or elders that we're taking care of at the same time. So, you know, we're, we're also looking for ways that everybody can contribute or stay productive. So stay tuned. We're hoping to have that up by midweek and I'll trigger that on the webpage when we get that going. Good, Christy, thanks for that. And a uh, quick uh, reminder uh, on, on this uh, overall, uh, for folks who are in an impacted center or a store, uh, what's the, the leave policy? People are, are still asking some questions around that, Christy, and how pay works uh, in this time. They, they just wanna be reassured as to what we're doing yeah. for them. Thanks for that question. I would say a couple of things just by context. I think people are really nervous. Uh, you know, I watched a governor yesterday do a webcast and I think he hit it really well. Times are really uncertain, and when we have no control over the things that are happening around us, it makes us really anxious. And I think uh, our jobs, which have all been upended, and we're doing them in this completely different way, and our kids are home, or our elders uh, are, are, are needing our care, and we, we maybe can't get to them, maybe they're in a nursing home we can't visit. All of these things create a lot of uncertainty and anxiety. And so a couple of things I would say. First, all of our policies are on the uh, Verizon COVID webpage. And we've completely overhauled the employee facing portion of that. So it's really user friendly. You can go in and click on, I have COVID or I'm quarantined or I have a caregiver issue and it'll take you right to the content specific to the circumstances you face. Also, there's an ask Christy button. So if you don't see the answer readily or you're still uncomfortable, you write me. I've got a whole team of people manning that inbox. We got about 280 emails into that last week and we've been able to respond to all of them within 24 hours. And a lot of them have that tone, Jeremy, which is I found the answer to my question, but if I am if I do this, I'm nervous, I don't wanna lose my job, can you document it? And so I just want our V-teamers to know that we are really, uh, as a company and a leadership team, trying to find ways that everybody can stay connected. And if you're um, you know, working with us, we're working with you and, and all of our policies have really been designed. If you have COVID, you're getting paid. If you're quarantined, you're getting paid. If you're working from home, you're getting paid. If your stores are closed and you can't go to the store, uh, we're giving you compensation and we're going to be finding things to ask people to do from home, even in those circumstances. And then ultimately, if you have caregiver requirements, uh, we have an application for compensation. We received over 2,000 and I think we found only about 25 that we felt didn't meet the standard for what we were trying to accomplish. And even then, we're following up with those individuals to see how to help them. And, and one more quick hit for yeah. you, Christy, before I'll go ahead, Hans. Maybe, Jeremy, I can say something there. I think that you're hitting on something so important, Christy. In these times, there are no questions that uh, are stupid or strange. Ask the questions. We have teams up, Christ and her team and the uh, Emergency Operations Center, they basically ask the questions all the time. So I think uh, ask the questions you have, doesn't really matter what question it is. It's better you know than don't know and going and being worried. Here we have the team up doing it. So I couldn't reinforce that enough. And I think that Christian and her whole team 
responding or doing an excellent job and you will get an answer within 24 hours, whatever particular question you might have that might not be the general one that uh, we have out there. So, and it will probably help others as well. And it will help Christian and the team. Okay, this is a common question. Let's address it. So please ask any question. Good reminder. Thank you for that, Hans. And Christy, one other uh, piece, you know, that and for both of you before we wrap up today, uh, a reminder that as this thing goes on, it looks like this working from home and where we are right now is the new normal until otherwise said. Is that correct? Yeah, I think that we 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 understand that it's uh, uncertain times and, and we don't know where, where this uh, how long it will go on, etc. So. Uh, the, as the as situation evolves, we will come back. But right now, we continue as is and work from home, the ones that can. Uh, and uh, and we will give a good heads up when we, we feel that we're going to change that. Uh, so people have time or employees have time to adjust. And now we're going to be in the office. Uh, it's not going to be like from a fr Friday to uh, a Monday. We're going to we're going to adjust this. And it can also be different for different places in in the world and in even in the US. So uh, too early to say right now, but uh, we continue to work as is uh, and uh, we will continue to communicate, but there's no set dates on when this will end, et cetera. We just continue as is. Good. Christy, any final thoughts today? Just a quick heads up for our employees. The coronavirus webpage, we will be moving it to the Verizon inside Verizon publicly accessible web page to make it even easier for V teamers to find the information that they need. Uh, and then I just want to thank all of you that are out there working hard to balance your personal and professional duties in this trying time. And all of our care is going out to our uh, V teamers that have coronavirus. Thank you, Christy. Hans, over to you for final thoughts. Uh, I think that uh... Uh, the important is in these times to stay close. I talked about the leader lead in these times, and that's what we're trying to do. We also talk a lot about communication. If that's between colleagues, family, uh, friends, whatever, these times are uh, uh, actually a, a test for many, many of us. So just remember that. Uh, I also think it's important to remember that we have a very loyal staff that is doing work out there. Uh, that uh, actually are needed for our society to see that our networks are up and, and uh, I cannot thank them enough for the great work they're doing. For the ones working from home, I just want like to say now we're get, getting into the second week, maybe some of you even longer working from home. I think it's important to, uh, to get into a process of uh, uh, running the business as usual because we're going to continue with this for a while. Uh, uh, with, of course, with some exemption that you have children home and all of that, we understand it and people will be very understandable for it. But it's also important to get back to the normal rhythm, rhythm of meetings, etc. Because uh, this, this is so important to keep the company going, but it's also a well-being for all of us that we continue to communicate and, and do our daily work. So uh, I just ask you for that. We're coming into the second or the third week. It's going to be important. So once again, great. Uh, to be here and talk to all of you. We're going to come back tomorrow, uh, probably more Q&A, new things happening. Uh, but in general, um, thank you for all you're doing out there. It's, it's an important time we're living in, and this is when we're sticking up as a leader. Yes, Hans and Christy, thank you both so much. And a reminder, don't forget to reach out to those folks uh, to say hello and just check in to see how they're doing. Uh, got some other interesting questions. Don't forget, if you're working from home, stand up every once in a while, stretch, walk around. You're, you're free to do that. You, you can have uh, on. Folks may not see this at home, but Hans just did that for us. So thank you, Hans. But you know, feel free to, <laughs> to do that. It's it's important to to keep yourself physically strong and, and mentally fit through all of this. But uh, wrapping it up for today, uh, if you're available later today, you can join Guru on the Verizon News Instagram at 2 p.m. Eastern, where he'll be talking about the age of journalism and COVID-19. We talked to him Friday about those things. So important to keep that uh, to keep that going and and to talk about it. And as we're going to try to end every day, uh, a thank you to our teams out there who are working so hard. Uh, if you have a great story, please send them our way. Uh, and you can even post it on social with hashtag Ford Together and tag VZ up to speed. So I'll leave you with a familiar face today. We'll see you back here tomorrow at noon. Thanks, everybody. I want to say thanks to our retail teams. Over the weekend, my father-in-law, who's almost 70, his phone stopped working. He went into a store and you were able to fix the problem. Now, I'm working from home, which has its own challenges. 
but you are there serving our customers like him every day and keeping us connected. Thanks for all that you do.